Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and or coming back. I appreciate it and hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Today I'm going to talk about Lightroom and compare it to Luminar. Um, I actually have no idea why I've never done this video because I get asked a lot, hey, what's the difference between Lightroom and Luminar? What do you get in one that you don't get in the other or whatever? Um, so I'm going to talk about that. And so I hope you're ready to talk about Lightroom and Luminar. I'm going to draw a comparison. I use both products. I like both products. Obviously, the majority of my videos, if you've been a subscriber to my channel, um, and if you haven't, hit that button um, if you would, but the majority of my videos are about Luminar because that's kind of my thing. It's the product I use the most, and I think it's incredibly capable. I often will use it, though, as an external editor to Lightroom. So let me walk through some of the benefits of both products, and we'll talk about that. So let's hop in. Okay, so I am in Lightroom, and now with Lightroom, I'm going to go ahead and close that side panel because you don't really need to see that and I'm going to close that bottom panel make the photo bigger so I'm in the develop module so that's the first place to start and that is the develop module in Lightroom is where you can do all your edits it's basically where all the filters live and the filters are right here down this right hand side now that's um, I think one of the the main things to know about Lightroom is that it compares pretty much or, no, actually it's the other way around the main thing to know about Luminar is that it is primarily the develop module of Lightroom on steroids. You don't have all these other modules. So that's one of the benefits of Lightroom. And that is if you click over here to library, you have all these different folders and you know collections and things you can set up. So um, this isn't about how I organize my library, but basically I organize it by location and date. And so, you know, this is my Europe folder. I'm in that because this is a photo from Copenhagen. But these are all my different trips to Europe and the different places I've been. You know, I do the same thing for my U.S. travels. So these are different spots around the U.S. where I've been uh, and the dates, etc. That's a great feature of Lightroom. And in my opinion, makes it kind of the industry standard. Now I'm going to get back to the develop module. Um, uh, but that's a big deal because the, the digital asset manager or catalog or library, those terms are used kind of interchangeably. It's a big deal. I think it's the industry standard. Um, Luminar does not have a damn uh, digital asset manager. However, they are working, one, uh, working on one, so it will be coming out. I don't know when. I'm recording this late May 2018, and all I know is I've been told it's supposed to come later this year. Same thing you've heard. Um, so don't ask me because I don't know when it's coming. I haven't seen it. I don't know anything about it other than what's on their website. Um, the point is, it is coming, and when it does come, you'll see videos from me comparing that dam to this Lightroom dam. However, today, that's a big benefit of um, Lightroom is that I think it's an industry standard and the catalog is really solid. You also have all these other things up here. You have maps, you have books, slideshow. Uh, this print uh, module is very detailed. Not so in Luminar. You just don't have that in Luminar. It basically uses the print function that's built into your OS. And so it's not nearly as, um, well, complex is the word that comes to mind, but it's not really as feature rich as the Lightroom print module. So, you know, these are things I'm talking about that are points for Lightroom. Again, I like the product. I think it's great. Uh, I've used it for several years and I intend to keep using it. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff like that in Lightroom. There's also a ton of learning content online for Lightroom. I bought a course. You can buy courses from all kinds of people um, to help you get up to speed with Lightroom if you need the help. There's also just copious amounts of videos right here on YouTube about Lightroom. You could Google that and find all kinds of stuff. And so um, there's probably, I, I won't even say probably, I'm going to say definitely more learning content available free and paid for Lightroom. However, you have people like myself that create a lot of Luminar videos. There's a lot of stuff on the Luminar website, and so that's coming on. So there's going to be more and more. Keep in mind, Luminar is basically a two-year-old product. Lightroom is like, what, seven or eight years? I don't even know. Um, so it's a number of years old. People have been uh, messing around with it for longer. Therefore, there's more content. I think that just makes sense. Um, there's a lot of preset packs and things like that for Lightroom that you can purchase from well-known photographers. Um, Luminar also has a lot of preset packs you can buy. I've got a bunch on my blog. You can find a link down below. There's other people that have Luminar presets. You can just Google that if you don't like mine. You can get them in the Luminar store on the Luminar website. There's a lot of things like that. So that's coming on. But you know, again, based on 
the youth, if you will, you know, of Luminar only being around a couple of years, you're not going to have quite as much content, both video learning educational content as well as preset packs. Um, and I've actually heard some people say they like Lightroom better because there are fewer filters. Um, and that's true. There's These are the filters in Lightroom. Um, in Luminar, there's 50. That's a 5 followed by a 0. So I think that's a benefit. In fact, I think that's one of the key benefits of Luminar is that there are so many filters that you cannot get in Lightroom. You've got Accent AI, which is an artificial intelligence uh, type based filter that's kind of like the easy button, one slider, and it really does a lot to your photo. It's pretty amazing. Uh, there's things like the matte look to create vintage looks. There's LUT mapping. If you create, uh, take presets from other spots like Lightroom and convert them to LUTs, you can import them and use them in Luminar. You've got Brilliance and Warmth, you've got Golden Hour, you've got Orton Effect, you've got Image Radiance, uh, you've got a Texture Overlay Filter, you've got Sun Rays, you've got Split Color Warmth, um, Color Balance, God, that's like my favorite filter in Luminar. You can do all kinds of amazing color work uh, in that. And so there's a lot of filters in Luminar, and I think that's one of the benefits. So some people like the simplicity of Lightroom. I like the um, availability of all the presets in Luminar. So, um, let me talk about a couple more things here in Lightroom and do a couple of basic edits and then we'll walk over to Luminar and do a little bit of comparison and go back and forth. So in this photo, I'm going to wing it here. Uh, I don't have a plan. I'm going to take down the highlights, maybe lift the shadows, lift the whites, take the blacks down, add some clarity, a little bit of contrast, maybe bump the exposure slightly. Uh, I think I'll take the highlights and the whites actually a little bit down. I think that's too much. Shadows up. I'm going to bump the vibrance. I'm going to bump the saturation. I actually want to change the color temp. I want to go a little bluer and maybe a little bit of tint work there. Whoa, not that much. Just a little bit. And in fact, um, I think I might lift the shadows a little bit more. Something like that. So that's a quick edit in Lightroom. If you hit the backslash key in Lightroom, that gives you a before view. You can see that uh, there it is. And there's the after. Now, I'd probably crop the photo. There's a little bit of another boat creeping into the right-hand side of the frame. You can easily crop it here. Uh, you can just maintain your original aspect ratio and just go something like that and say done. So that's a quick and easy way to edit the photo. And that's what I would do in Lightroom. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this. I'm going to pop over to Luminar and then we'll do a comparison. One second. Okay, so if I'm in Lightroom and I want to go to Luminar, I just say photo, edit in, and I choose edit in Luminar 2018. My little dialog box comes up. All those settings look good. I am going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments because I always like to edit a copy. I don't want to edit an original. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me make this cover the full screen. Um, and here's Luminar. Now, here's what I'm talking about the filters. Add filters, and here's the list. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to use Luminar. There's too much stuff. I've got 150 videos. You can just check out my channel and see what you like there. But I'm just going to start with two filters that basically cover um, what's, uh, what I've used in the develop module of Lightroom. And so there's the develop filter. So I'm going to do something similar to what I did there. And I don't really know the numbers. I'm just kind of going on feel. Um, let me just go ahead and uh, work through this. But you can kind of see how this works. Um, it's fairly similar in terms of how I uh, uh, edit in um, Lightroom. I'm just bumping up saturation and vibrance here to give it a little kick. And there's a similar photo. If I want to crop it, I just go to Tools, I go to Crop, and I can just drag it like that to get rid of that little bit of the boat that's showing on the right-hand side. And I've got a similar photo. Again, I'm not exactly comparing the results. Um, of one versus the other. This is not, you know, d does the slider in Luminar at 10 match the same setting in, in, at 10 of the same filter in Lightroom. This is about comparing the two products. So here I am in the Luminar interface. Some of the benefits I talked about is filters, right? So you have all these filters. Now some of them are redundant. I'm going to give you that. Um, things like color temperature, I've got that already in the develop filter. Exposure, same. Highlights and shadows, same. Whites and blacks, same. So while there are 50 filters, I would say there's you know a good 20 or so that you, you don't have in Lightroom. So it, it works incredibly well to, um, to well, it gives you a lot of creative flexibility, I guess, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, 
So that's one thing. I talked about layers. So all you do is you have a layers panel here. You just click on the plus sign. You add new adjustment layer or a new image layer. You can do either one. An adjustment layer is, hey, I like the adjustments I have. I want to add a new layer and do some other stuff. Add an adjustment layer. A new image layer is usually one of two things. Hey, I want to put a new sky on the photo. I'm going to add a new image layer. So you would just go like this, and then you would go find a new sky like that one and click open. And uh, I'm not going to do that. I've got tutorial videos about how to do that. Um, and in fact, I wouldn't replace this guy because I like it. But that's how easily you can add a new layer. Uh, the second idea for adding a new layer is to add a texture. So same thing. You would just say plus, add new image layer. You would just go get a texture. And that could be, you know, whatever, rocks, leaves, uh, old print paper, you know, whatever. Um, so the point is you've got all kinds of flexibility to uh, do things in Luminar that you can't do in Lightroom. And again, that's because of the layers functionality. In order to get uh, layers functionality with Lightroom, you have to go to Photoshop. If you already have Photoshop and love it and know it, great. Maybe you don't need Light, uh, excuse me, Luminar, unless you just want some of these other filters because they're pretty amazing. But, um, you know, it just depends on what you're looking for. And, and that's really the core thing here is it comes down to personal preference in many ways. You know, what is it you like? What do you want to do? Do you need a copious amount of filters to do all these creative edits? Do you like to have the layers functionality of Luminar so that you can get in there and do some, uh, some things that you can't do in Lightroom? I personally never use Photoshop. I've never liked it. I've never really used it. And so my Photoshop skills are kind of, you know, maybe, maybe not zero, but they're not particularly great. And that's because um, I just don't care about it. Um, I always found it complicated and kind of kludgy. Um, it's super powerful. I just don't like it. And so having the layers functionality here in Illuminar to me is a big deal and a huge win. And that's why I like Luminar so much. Um, workspaces. You can create custom workspaces. A workspace, and these are all built in, a workspace is just a collection of filters. So let's say I want to do the uh, landscape workspace. I'm going to lose the edits in my photo, and it's going to drop all these filters. All these filters are set to zero. Every slider within them is at zero, right? And so that's because I chose a workspace, which is a collection of filters. So you can build your own. I've built a number of them here. Wildlife, Magic Hour, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so you can just come in and create your own workspace. You could even go to Lightroom. Let's go back to Lightroom for a second. You could say, well, there's the basic filter, tone curve, HSL, blah, blah, blah. You could go get those same filters and just make a Lightroom workspace. Very simple, very easy. And then when you get over to Luminar, all the filters that mimic the look of Lightroom are right there waiting for you. It's something to do. I, I haven't done it because I don't really need to mimic that. It's not something that I would really use, but there, uh, that's you know part of the power of Luminar and the flexibility of the workspaces um, feature. Um, there's a lot of presets that come included in Luminar, as I mentioned earlier. There's a number of different categories that are built in. I've got some that I've made. You can get them on my blog if you're interested. There's other ones that have been given away free. There's all kinds of presets. And so you can just come over here. Um, let me get into, like, I'll go to my London Calling. So, you know, I've got all these different presets that I've just created. And now they're not all going to look good on every photo. Um, this one looks, you know, kind of good. It's kind of saturated. But, you know, with a quick couple of clicks, I've got a preset applied to my photo. And if it's a little too intense, I can just say filters amount. I can take that down a little bit. And that's basically like reducing the opacity of that preset on that layer. So cool functionality, but it was a very quick edit to get into this look, which is kind of close to the look that I had already built. Not exactly, but it's kind of close. Um, so I think the presets is a, is a big deal because there's a lot of them that come built in to Luminar. Um, to be clear, the preset I used is in my London Calling preset pack, which I sell for $10 on my blog. You can find that link down below if you're interested. And if not, that's cool too. Um, I personally think Luminar is very simple. Um, I've heard people say it's complicated, as I mentioned earlier. Some people use Lightroom and there's like, you know, 10 or 12 filters or whatever. And people say, that's all I need. I don't want to complicate things. Okay, then stay with Lightroom. That's cool. I like the fact that all these filters exist in Luminar because it gives me the flexibility and the, cre and the creativity to do things I couldn't do in Lightroom. And so um, I find it simple to use. I think the interface is clean. You know, you got tools here like crop and erase and things like that. You got filters over here. You got layers right there. And, and that's all you need, right? So 
I find it simple and so that I like the interface better personally. And as I said earlier, it didn't require me to spend a whole lot of time learning how to use the product. What I had to spend time was getting to know these 50 filters and what the differences were because some are big and some are subtle. And so it took me a little while to do that, but that's kind of normal. That's half the fun of having software is just adding filters and jacking around and seeing what looks you get. So to me, that's a benefit. I'll let you debate whether uh, that's true or not. And I talked about the software subscription. Lightroom, you pay every month. Luminar, you don't. You pay once um, and you own the software forever. However, they're on a basically a once a year upgrade cycle. And that means uh, about once a year, they're gonna come out with a new version. And that is a paid upgrade because it has new features and new functionality and new stuff you know, under the hood, perhaps, you know, improving the performance of the product, and that's a paid upgrade. So you would, if you stayed consistent with your upgrade cycles on the Skyloom Luminar product, you'd probably spend um, money every year upgrading. It's not as much as you would spend um, every year on having Lightroom and Photoshop, but, you know, it's money, so it's something to think about. Here's what I like. Um, I've talked a lot about both. Lightroom has a lot of advantages. It has modules that Luminar doesn't have. Um, Luminar has a lot of advantages. It has 50 filters plus layers and workspaces and things like that that you can't get in Lightroom. I personally think there's a benefit to having both. It costs more money. I can't help that. Two companies, two different products, but I use Light, uh, excuse me, Luminar all the time as a plug-in to Lightroom, such as I'm doing in this example. So I could come over here, stick one of my presets on it, I could click apply, and it'll drop it back in to Lightroom next to my originals. So they kind of nest together. I like that. They're integrated well. It works really well together. So that way you get all the benefits of the functionality in Luminar um, and you also get all the benefits of the functionality in Lightroom. And there's a lot of functionality and benefits to Lightroom. You're back here, you know, you got the library we talked about. You got all these things. Uh, the print module is very, you know, advanced. So there's things like that. Um, I think it's a win to have both. I'll let you decide what makes sense to you. If you're editing or managing your photos in some other application, maybe it's uh, Mac Photos or some other product, um, or maybe you just have a folder structure on your hard drive and you just need an external editor, maybe, uh, maybe Luminar is the way to go. Um, if you already have Lightroom and you're looking for some flexibility, creativity, and functionality that gives you stuff you can't do in Luminar, excuse me, that you can't do in Lightroom, maybe Luminar is the answer for you. And excuse me, maybe you don't want to go master Photoshop and take, you know, hours and hours of instruction to learn how to get really good at it. Maybe you just want some easier stuff. I think Luminar is the answer for that. So I hope this is helpful. I get this question a lot. Hey, Jim, should I have Lightroom or Luminar? What's the difference? Why would I use one over the other and what for? I hope I've been able to walk through what the differences are and share with you kind of what those differences are and, and illustrate them as well. There's a number of differences. There are a number of overlaps and similarities. When Luminar's uh, Digital Asset Manager or Catalog or Library, whatever you want to call it, comes out, hopefully later this year, 2018, I'll be back with videos on that. And then we'll have to see because, you know, other cool thing about Lightroom is you get this film strip, right? And so you can go through and see all these other photos that I took on this that are in the same uh, folder in Lightroom. So this is a trip to Copenhagen a few years ago. I can just scroll through and check out all my photos. Um, and I like that so I can quickly go from image to image and decide, all right, I want to edit this or I want to group these three and, and export them and upload them to Flickr or Facebook, things like that. Um, and that's quicker and easier to cull photos and go through and rate them, um, which a lot of that has to do with the library module because you can flag photos, keyword photos. You got all kinds of detailed EXIF data over here, um, as you can see, right? So it'll tell you the you know, the dimensions and, and all kinds of stuff. You can keyword stuff, etc. cetera. So um, there's a lot you can do. I think it is highly beneficial at this point in time to have both personal preference. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. What's your workflow look like? What do you want to do? I think that's the big question. And, and therefore, after you know what you want to do, what tools do you need to be able to do that? So I hope this is helpful, my friends. If you have questions, leave a comment, hit subscribe, hit like, share this with your friends, and let me know what other questions I can answer for you. I'll do my best to try to address them. More videos coming soon. I'll be back at it, and have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon, my friends, and adios.